so recently a woman named Tahira Ahmad was riding a United was flying in a United Airlines flight now just let's state get this out of the blue one of the flight uh, one of the airline companies that was that that obviously being part of the 9-11 attacks being one of the, their planes lost during the 9-11 attacks was two United Airlines flights now these now so granted there's obviously going to probably be a lot of discrimination a lot of a lot of prejudice and just outright bias and stuff like that from a company like that all that said that does not justify the means of this woman who was discriminated uh, discriminated against by not only a flight attendant but by passengers on the flight as well now essentially what happened is that um, she was flying and she asked for a, a diet soda a diet coke or something like that and this stewardess brought her a um, uh, opened can which frankly I find disgusting myself and so did Ahmad and Ahmad basically said could I please have an unopened can of soda for hygienic re because you know for hygienic reasons obviously because you never know who's spat in it or if it's been sitting around and somebody's already drank from it or something like that you don't know especially with how today's people are here anymore and not only that it's just it is it's just unsanitary I, I would not serve a a opened soda to a person at a restaurant or anything like that and I've been in food service so yeah anyway the stewardess said it's not our policy to give you an unopened can of soda we open it you know basically trying to say we open it for you we give it to you well then she um, uh, tr they gave a man sitting next to her across the aisle a unopened can of beer so you, and she obviously had a problem with that it's like I thought they weren't that you weren't supposed to have un, uh, unopened cans and then the lady comes up she cracks the soda and uh, yeah, basically again says we you know it's not our policy to give you a can uh, uh, give you an unopened can of soda because you might quote use it as a weapon yet she gives a man which I'm assuming who I'm assuming to be white male and probably Christian and I'm assuming the flight attendant herself probably was either white or black and the whole issue being that the this woman um, Ahmad felt like she was being discriminated against turned to her fellow uh, passengers and asking if you know they were out if anybody else was outraged by it and of course everybody either shook their heads or just tried to plainly ignore it the man that was next to her then proceeded to basically say that you know, tell her to quote shut the fuck up be, and that she and and basically stated that she w would have used it as a weapon uh, if she if she knew she could and that she knew she would just outright racism outright discriminatory remarks towards a person who simply wears a hijab yeah because everybody who wears a fucking hijab or anybody who wears a fucking turban is a goddamn terrorist right everyone who's who practices the uh, practices Islam or everyone that read who even picks up a fucking Quran is a goddamn terrorist I have a Quran myself and I'm Wiccan and pagan I'm not Islamic but I have a Quran for the sake of well just the sake of having it for reference I've read the Quran I see nothing wrong in the Quran I mean just, I see nothing more wrong with the Quran than I do with the Bible just like I see nothing nothing more wrong with the religion of Islam as I do the religion of Christianity 
just stating a fact. And the fact that people just outright ignored it, that's not so fuck and that's not really fucking that's not really surprising to me. Because in especially aboard United Airlines, I mean people are see a Muslim per, a person with a hijab or a person who's Muslim, they automatically freak the hell out. Not all terrorists are Muslim. In fact, most of your terrorists come are actually are more politically motivated and actually come from Christianity. For instance, Westboro Baptist Church, the Ku Klux Klan, any of your neo-Nazi organizations, uh, the Tea Party, um, just to name a few. A lot of these groups are, I would consider terrorist groups, or at least extremist groups, at the very minimal part to it. And then that you've got terrorist groups, you know, such as the, uh, you know, in other countries and stuff like that, like you've got, I mean, obviously you have ISIS, and that's kind of a rudimentary argument, kind of, because the ISIS is not a, um, ISIS is not a, a Islamic extremist group, at least not in the sense that the actual body of it is not really Islamic. Most people that are fighting for the Islamic State are actually mercenaries like first worldist young stupid idiots who are rebelling against mommy and daddy that have been coming from like France, Germany, Italy, Spain, uh, Britain, the United States, and you know just a lot of Western countries and Russia also. And most of your the people that are part of ISIS aren't really actually fighting for the religion, are not really fighting for Islamic extreme, um, Islam, um, they're not fighting for Islam, they're not necessarily, they're not fighting for, uh, religious extremism, t at least not in the technical sense, they're just fighting for, you know, they're fighting for s political reasons or certain things like that. The only actual part that of ISIS that makes it really political, um, makes it actually Islamic fundamentalist is the upper hands, pretty much like al-Baghdadi and, and other um, senior officials. Those are the guys that tend to be more the clerical sort of nut jobs and stuff like that, but that is making up a very small small number of that group so the fact that it's and not only that it's them that are calling it the Islamic State if it was actually put into if it was if it was actually put to a goddamn vote most people wouldn't even know what to fucking call it because most li likely they would just be forming it into some sort of radically nationalistic thing or some anarchic sort of you know some sort of anarcho-nationalist sort of fervor, basically. Some sort of bullcrap thing that would never really function correctly. And ISIS itself can't, e can't even function correctly as a unit itself. Yes, they're somewhat well-organized, but they're not very effective as a unit. And just, in general, I... I, I yeah... I could go into a whole bunch of things, such as the fact that ISIS was trained by Mossad and to fight Bashar al-Assad's forces, and, well, you know how that whole free Syrian army thing went. By the way, are they even still relevant? Anyway. Um, get, but my point being is that not all terrorists are Muslim. In fact, most of your... the terrorism, that the threats towards America actually come from Christian fundamentalism, not Islamic fundamentalism. The The idea that that ISIS could come over here and bomb the, the U.S. and take over the U.S. with 30,000 forces is asinine. There's no way they could hold a... They, there's no way they could hold a, a, that large, this large, vast territory with that amount of thing. They could disrupt the flow of government, they could definitely do that. They could put the fear of, you know, whatever higher power or whatever 
else do you believe in that could put any sort of fear and tactical maneuvering into the American people in their hearts. But ISIS actually being a real threat to American freedom? Mm, not really. Not with 30,000 people. That's just... And, and people think that... Are, uh, bitching out and freaking out about the idea of them trying to form the reform the Islamic Caliphate, the Abbasid dynasty and shit like that under Sharia law. Number one, the Abbasid dynasty ruled most of southern Europe, uh, northern Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia. And that that's because they actually had the numbers to do it a 30 to 40,000 man radical group of nin of just misfits and morons they they couldn't they can probably hold Baghdad they could probably or Mosul even they could hold maybe a, a little bit of you know a few areas in Syria in Syria and Iraq but there's a reason why ISIS is not expanding throughout the Middle East. There's a reason why they're not, you know, forming puppet governments and stuff like that or creating any th sort of thing. It's because they don't have the numbers to do it. Sure, they could probably get, a, you know, a couple of radical groups in other countries to fight for them, but they're not really going to establish any sort of legitimate sort of any legitimate form of government so that being said there's a reason why they're not expanding and why they will most and there's a reason why the idea of them even getting any further outside the lines of the areas that they're in is just retarded it's just you know a completely overblown scenario ISIS does not pose a threat to the United States. Al-Qaeda does not actually pose a threat to the United States. The Taliban does not actually pose a threat to the United States. One, because they can barely fucking hold the territories that they do. The only thing that they could possibly do is, you know, disrupt, you know, disrupt society, disrupt the, the form of governments governments but in, in effectiveness pretty, I, I'm gonna basically make a comparison here that groups like ISIS al-Qaeda and the Taliban are no more effective at being able to govern a vast territory as the United States is at being able to defeat them in the Middle East or hold those territories frankly it's just they're ill they're, they're ill equipped they're ill they're ill efficient it's just not going to work so it's not arabs you should be fearing in fact the people that you should be fearing that actually pose the greatest risk to the united states is actually well the us government for one but definitely christian fundamentalism and frankly groups like the tea party and Westboro Baptist Church and stuff like that. Those sort of entities and evangelicals and stuff like that actually are legitimately a threat to the United States because they're typically very socially and nationally conservative. They're very nationalistic, overly patriotic, they're overly militaristic, and basically have an imperialistic and theological goal in mind, a, cru a holy crusade in mind, and all that being said, they legitimately are a threat to the United States and effectively its government and the people, because were they to get power, they could actually, you know, they, they could actually wield their beliefs and mold that into a, well, more of a totalitarian regime than we already have. It's actually already been stated by the US military that evangelicals are the number one threat to America so suck on that the fact though that we're all bitching about a woman who happens to be a Muslim who happened you know and who just wanted a freaking soda 
was denied that and discriminated against just because of the fear mongering and the uh, just prejudice and racism you know of the narrow minded Americans on that plane is asinine because frankly she poses no risk to you now of course Breitbart and other group and other right wing groups are trying to already label her you know as, you're trying to justify it and legitimize their racism and their their idiocy by saying that she that she's connected with oh she's connected to the Muslim Brotherhood she's connected to certain group to these this one person who knew this person knew this person who happened to be connected with Al Qaeda or ISIS we don't really know because we don't actually have actual sources we it just actually says a report a report or a thing claims or whatever they they like they don't legitimately provide actual evidence the only evidence that they have is facebook photos and they legitimately outright say that facebook photos proving that she was connected to this to these groups you know far be it from me to um, be one to criticize your journalism and professionalism because this is far from a professional journalist venture but you, I, I tend to stay away from using Facebook as my credited source <laughs> much like I tried for the most I try for the most part not to use Wikipedia as at least as my only source of information and I actually do try to find other articles that are legitimately that leg have legitimate studies or legitimate reports or at least have something to go on anyway that isn't just baseless assertions but if your only defense is Facebook photos claiming, oh yes, this is, look at, you know, this, she happens to be part of a, you know, she's somehow connected to these groups, I kind of have a hard time taking you seriously. Not only that, you know, the fact that you're also conservative has nothing to do with it, but anyway. Um, yes, I'm biased, but at least I have a point. <laughs> If, I mean, seriously, your only defense is Facebook photos. Th that's actually worse than go than using Wikipedia as your citation. And frankly, I think Breitbart is Breitbart's just got their head up their ass. The fact that this woman was outright discriminated against. People ignored it or just didn't want to get in. They didn't want to get involved or even, frankly probably believe you know were b joined in on the discrimination but the fact that this woman faced outright discrimination for just wanting a goddamn soda which they thought she could use as a weapon I don't really know how you could really make make a weapon out of a soda can really what you gotta knock a couple of people in your on their head it's one person against you know, a whole bunch of other nationalistic, fear-mongering, pin-headed Americans that are going to, that are most likely, that would probably stop anything that would happen. And you're only, and you're wet, but yet you, you fear her hijacking a plane with a goddamn soda can. Yeah, like, what's she gonna do? Hit somebody in the head with it? Like, really? Like, they're... I really don't see how you can fasten a weapon out of a soda out of a soda can. Just, just like I don't really understand how you could sudden how you could make explosive out of just having a toothbrush and a and some toothpaste and a cup and basically your shaving kit. I really don't understand that. But yet those are banned on planes too. So well. You can have a little bit of it, but you can't have certain things because you might make a bomb out of it. It's like this overwhelming fear and manipulation 
just played on by U.S. government propaganda and the just the insane nature of the first worldist mentality to just believe and the bourgeois mentality of the United States to just believe every fucking thing that's spouted off to them that it uh, suddenly it just starts eating away at their brains that oh yeah this must be a real thing without ever actually using their common sense in fact I really do think that it's that ever since 9-11 people's common sense has basically become a virtue actually using your goddamn brain has become a freaking is a gift frankly because no one actually thinks logically they no longer think critically they no longer have any common sense to actually you know stop and think well wait a minute this kind of seems a little off how, how, how the heck can you make a weapon out of a soda can an open soda can by the way it's like sh the woman was thirsty damn it <laughs> But yet, of course, you know, yeah, it, you can fasten a fucking bomb out of it, apparently. I, I really don't understand people. I really don't. But the point is that Tahir Ahmad suffered this horrible racism. And you know what the United Airlines people basically said? They basically said, we're sorry for the misunderstanding. And that we hope you'll fly again. Fuck, if I ended up being discriminated against because of the, I'm not wearing it, because of the pinnacle that I happen to have on, on a flight, I would probably tell them to go fuck themselves and that I was not going to use their airline anymore. It really kind of gets me because you don't really see a lot of this on Southwest. You actually don't even see this on when you ride on Greyhound buses or Amtrak. You only see it at the airports. You only see it when you're in the sky. Like, yeah, it's one of those things where it just seems like the main focus has always been on airplanes. And in the last, tw ever since airplanes have actually become commercial, airlines have become commercial, there has been... Yes, there's been several plane crashes. You know how a lot of planes end up, you know, well, crashing or end up, you know, not making it to their destination? Most of the time, it's pilot error. It's not hijacking. There's probably been, what, a, a handful of hijackings in the last 100 years since, you know, since the aircraft has been around and in the last, what, 60 years that an act that that commercial flights have been around there's been like a, a handful of hijackings worldwide but there has been hundreds and thousands of plane crashes due to pilot error or some other issue most of it's either mechanical failure pilot issue yeah uh, and, and it's just really asinine that we focus so much on the airlines and how we focus on a gr one group of people and we discriminate against one group of people simply for their religious beliefs. Now, I've talked about how not all terrorists are Muslim. Well, not all Muslims are terrorists. That's another thing that I keep telling people all the damn time because not all Muslims are terrorists. 99% of your Muslim population are God-fearing or, rough, or roughly practicing, varying um, practicing people, some even not even practicing at all, some are agnostic, if not lean to the atheistic side, but the point is, most of your Muslims are just peace-loving people who read their Quran, may or may not go to, uh, go to mosque, you know, every day or every so often, and pray. It, and then they go home, they go to work, they go to school, they, you know, they say I love you to their families, and they go about their day-to-day their day -day routine. The only, the people, the only groups of Muslims that are 
th that are terrorists are the actual fundamentally most well most the most fundamentalistly and clerical sort of groups that you know which is the one which I would like to call the one percent which quite legitimately is it's about one about maybe one to two to percent of the Muslim population that is a small and very just minute pot, a group of people that actually do cause trauma uh, not trauma drama and the and again groups like ISIS 30 to 40,000 people Al Qaeda like who have maybe what 5,000 people the Taliban which is a small you know fundamentalist regime of people it's a small political party numbering in what a couple dozen thousand or something maybe not even that much these people do not pose but these people don't even pose a significant risk to us at all to us in the first world yes they can cause violence in the areas that they're in in fact if they came over to America they can cause disruptions they can cause loss of life but they're not going to overthrow the US government in fact again it's just it's it's asinine to even worry to worry that much over this you know over all this and it's asinine to worry to even think that Muslims that all Muslims are terrorists because by creating that you're creating this dogmatism and you're creating this uh, this prejudice and the, uh, this and frankly this comes from petty nationalism just petty nationalism I'm not even talking about an actual full-on nationalism this is petty nationalism that causes this bullcrap and this is how all this this gets started so frankly I think it's a little bit I just think the whole situation could have been handled a whole lot better. I think that the people of the United States actually need to be more sensitive and understanding and frankly pick up a goddamn book. <clears throat> the Quran may I may I offer as a recommendation and actually may and actually I don't know maybe make a friend with someone who's a Muslim. I myself am friends with a few Muslims. In fact, I've got one person that's going to be visiting me very soon. And it's one of those things where I don't have a problem with her, she doesn't have a problem with me, and the people that I do know that are Muslims don't have a fucking problem. And I don't have a problem with them. The only time that Muslims and American and Americans are actually going, or any first world is bourgeois asshole, is if the fucking, is basically if you start being prejudiced, if you start being discriminatory, and if you basically start being a nationalistic and ignorant asshole, that is the only time that you're probably going to see them get angry. But they're not going to set a bomb off and blow you to smithereens. They're going. They just, you know, are going to say you're ignorant. You're and you don't know anything about my religious beliefs, you know. And you know, frankly, if they told you to educate yourself, I'd probably agree with them. So, in wrapping this up, so it doesn't get too babbly and overdrawn here, I just think that the ignorance that I've seen from Americans and just all that is pretty much what plays into the, the ignorance, the nationalism and the fear mongering is what ultimately played into all this and frankly um, Tahira has got this whole thing going on um, to raise to raise awareness about uh, about you know the Muslim community and stuff like that and to try to bridge the gap you know and try to uh, try to combat racism and pre um, prejudice and religious discrimination because quite frankly what they're doing what this 
pretty much constitutes is a violation of their very basic human rights as of citizens their universal which by the way under the universal declaration of human rights i believe it was which the u.s is a part of and signed because it's part of the whole u.n thing you are violating their freedom of religion you are by violating their freedom of their freedom of speech their freedom of expression their very rights as a human being are being violated also under the u.s constitution amendment one you are violating their freedom of religious expression by discriminating against them based upon just their appearance how they dress and thusly no you know identifying oh they're muslim they must be a terrorist no that that's discriminatory that's unconstitutional and it's a dumb mentality to have it's narrow-minded and retarded so all i can say at the end of the day is you know my hat off to my my hat goes off to Tahira and uh, to all the, the you ignorant American douche nozzles go fuck yourself I'm NorCal Nick leader of the revolutionist movement defending Muslims and Arabs against American injustice and prejudice and this has been NorCal Corner peace Hey, if you liked that big old ranty spew of mine and you want to see more videos, go, you know, I got playlists and I got a whole channel devoted to all this. So, uh, and yeah, if you also know somebody that's a bigoted, racist, discriminatory prick of something, you know, have, show them this video. I'd love to hear their comments or to see their videos of themselves. It's been fun doing this, people. See you later.